Welcome to our weekly Forex market analysis call, and this is for trading for the week of June 25 to 29, 2018. Just a quick disclaimer before we get started. This is for educational purposes only. Currency trading is um, a risky business, especially under volatile conditions that we are seeing right now. So please be mindful of that and be careful with your money. So we'll start off as usual by looking at our Forex factory calendar here. So we had a um, ton of central bankers last week and the week before here. Hopefully this week we will have a more of a settled market. So Monday, we don't have a ton, just the German IFO business climate there. And on Tuesday, we do have a couple of MPC members speaking. So with two MPC members or with one more MPC member being added. Um, sorry, uh, does, uh, how's the sound for everyone? Just a quick sound check before I continue. Can you guys hear me? Okay, looks like sound is okay here. Um, all right, so let's go. Um, so in we had last week we had a Bank of England. The biggest thing that happened with Bank of England, or maybe we should discuss both of them, uh, ECB and Bank of England. So Bank of England, um, they were not expected to raise rates or change things, which they didn't. Uh, the biggest thing was that one more MPC member changed his vote for raising rates. So this is um, this is the difference that uh, happened there. So because one more MBC member uh, put in a vote to raise rates, that caused a positive sentiment for a uh, British pound. And now the market is expecting that they are going to start raising rates at some point. Um, that's why we saw such a big move up in a British pound after the after the policy monetary policy statement came out, and with um, ECB the reason ECB uh, after ECB euro dropped was because even though uh, prior to that ECB announcement we had seen multiple ECB members come out and say that they're going to taper off the asset purchase program and they're potentially going to end it. And this is what we'll be discussed at the meeting, which had caused positive sentiment for the euro, because anytime you tighten the monetary policy, that is a positive thing for the currency. It makes the currency go up. However, um, during ECB uh, or at the ECB, what they uh, Draghi said that they are actually, yes, they're taping the program and they're going to end it. However, they are not looking to raise rates till late summer of 2019, which means there's another year that they're going to wait, which is essentially what Fed did when they started tightening their monetary policy. So, so something that would have been positive for ECB got, became uh, dovish for uh, dovish for Euro because Draghi came and said that they're not looking to raise rates. So Bank of England now, because there was no actual conference after, so nobody really got to ask questions after that statement came out um, in terms of uh, one person changing the vote to raise rates. So the data has been coming out overall. The data has been positive for the UK. So now the market sentiment is turning more towards them raising rates at some point. So that's what's going on. That's why we saw um, British pound go up last week. Now, because there was no press conference, the comments from these MPC members become very important. So that's why I would uh, suggest being careful when these comments come out because now the market's waiting to see what the central bank is going to do, what the forward direction will be in terms of raising rates. So if they start talking about raising rates, that's usually a positive for the currency. And then we have consumer confidence numbers out of the US. So we will uh, take a look at that. We also have FOMC members. So just like this MPC member for UK FOMC members, can have an impact depending on what they say, um, and especially during summer uh, trading conditions where liquidity tends to be low, with, and the prices can move uh, quite a bit under those circumstances, so just be mindful of that. We have business confidence number for New Zealand here. Here we have Bank of England Governor Carney speaking. So Governor Carney did speak uh, last week as well, but he didn't really touch on 
anything related to directly related to monetary policy and so forth. So if he uh, mentions anything about the tightening of monetary policy and things like that, uh, that will be positive for, um, for the currency. And then we also have stability, financial stability report. So this one here will be, will be important. So let's have a quick look where he's uh, talking. So I think this will be a good one here. Uh, oh, he's holding a press conference. Okay, so this is where, uh, this will be volatile for sure, because what happens during press conferences, all these uh, reporters get to ask questions. And I've seen that they tend to ask the same questions over and over again, forcing, uh, forcing them to respond. And the biggest question will be, oh, what are they looking at? When are they looking to raise rates? So um, this, will be, this will be very important and uh, likely a volatile uh, event. So be careful with that one. Uh, core durable goods for the U.S., that will be important. And then uh, crude oil and inventories, of course, are always important. But the very important thing here, also we have um, Bank of Canada, Governor Polo speaking. But this New Zealand here, we have um, cash rate here, so which is the interest rate. It's expected to stay the same. But the important thing, again, will be the statement. So right now, a lot of central banks are not changing rates, but it's what they say. Their comments are making the difference. So Draghi's comments made a big difference for euro, and uh, Carney's comments will have an impact on a British pound. And then we have this Reserve Bank of New Zealand rate statement. Uh, again, how they talk about the future of the economy, what they feel in terms of is it growing or are they going to face challenges, that type of stuff will start becoming important. So Australia essentially came out and said that they're not looking to drop rate. Any, any changes will be for the positive. So uh, New Zealand and Australia, they tend to be sort of, they kind of follow the same path, just like US and Canada tend to follow the same rate path. So these guys um, may start changing their monetary policy at some point as well. So we, the market will be watching for clues as to when they are going to do that. And it will be tightening. It won't really be a loosening of monetary policy, which will be positive for the currency. So any positive comments about the economy, the state of the economy, or future prospects of interest rates will be positive for New Zealand dollar and vice versa. So we'll keep that in mind. Thursday, GDP numbers are usually important here because it's a big measure of how the economy is doing. So that will be important for the U.S. on Thursday, but not a ton otherwise in terms of uh, um, central bankers and stuff. So we have current account um, for U.K., which will be important, especially with the trade wars. These trade balance current account numbers become very important. Uh, GDP for Canada will be important because Bank of Canada, again, uh, they have raised rates, but now everybody's waiting to see what they do in the future here. And then we have Bank of Canada Business Outlook Survey. So a few different things coming for Canada. All right, let's move on to the charts now. Okay, so we'll start off by taking a look at our euro dollar first um, and so let's see what do we have here so last week so overall we have this move to the downside we are coming into support right here twice price has bounced off of the support and now actually this looks bullish uh, so price has been trading in this range so between 1.1840 and 1.15. Uh, so that's the range that price has been trading. We have a bullish candle close here. So I'm looking for price to go up higher. So in this case, we could see price go up to the top. So my bias is to the upside and I'm looking for price to go up to 1.1840 level potentially uh, because we have rejected the bottom or price has rejected the bottom of the range. Now I'm looking for it to go to the high of the range. So the bias is to the upside for this week and looking for this further move up uh, into 1.1840 level for euro dollar. Pound dollar here. Pound dollar has a doji here as well. It's come into this previous support, now bouncing off of that. This one has also for the last four or five weeks here, it's been in this range and it's gone back and forth, but still 
it's been a range bound within that. So with this doji in the bottom, uh, I'm looking for price to uh, move back up into the high here, 1.3480. So my bias would be to the upside for pound US dollar as well. Aussie dollar here for the weekly, we have a doji as well. Uh, price came into, uh, almost came into the support. So there's a ton of support in this area right here. So price came into support. We have a doji here. So looking for price to move back up again. And again, a lot of these uh, currencies have been in this a little bit of a range or sideways range here. So looking for price to go back up again. And the target here would be 0 0.7650 level back into the support and resistance into the high of this pin here or into the towards the top of the pin. So bias is bullish for Aussie dollar as well. New Zealand dollar here. New Zealand dollar, we also see rejection. There's pin in the bottom. We have come into support. As you can see, price has reacted to the support multiple times and so there is resistance turning into support now we see a rejection here now we have a pin here so looking for price to go back up and as you can see price has been in this little bit for range here now at some point um with this one or actually let's take a quick look so another thing that can happen is we see do price do this and it could break out, but it doesn't look like it wants to break out right now because generally this is the type of move that I would be looking for. But right now it looks like it wants to pull, uh, pull back into this range. So I would look for price to go into the high of the range. So this is bullish here as well. Now we do have monetary policy for uh, New Zealand, which will have an impact, which can change things completely. So keeping that in mind, uh, we do from based on here price hitting support here this one could go higher back into the high of the range at 0 0.7080 level so again for this one as well bias will be to the upside dollar cat here dollar cat has been bullish recently especially with the drop in oil prices and stuff so here again we are into resistance so with this one uh, there is bullishness in here still so overall, the bias is still bullish, but I think we could see price do one of these, goes back up into the resistance, and then maybe push up from there. So bias is bullish here, and if it does get through the high, then I'm looking for price to move to the next one, but it could come into resistance right here and drop from one point, um, 1.3400 but if it crosses 3400 then i'm looking for price to go up even higher overall biases to the upside so this will be the first scenario if it breaks through then i'm looking for price to go to the next level here but either way this is uh, does have bullishness in it euro pound here euro pound has been all over the place um this one i restarted my computer so all my chart markings come back up here sorry about that okay so this is where we are uh price as we can see with this one it's been very much range bound price has just been in this range and if you go to the daily here we can see price has been just back and forth back and forth there's no clear indication at this point of where it's going it's just range bound and i'm expecting it to stay range bound so just looking to trade, if you're looking to trade this one, uh, the best case scenario here is just uh, buying, or sorry, buying at the bottom and selling at the high. So I'm looking for price to basically stay range bound with Euro pound. There's no real trend here. Uh, Euro Swiss franc here, this one has dropped. So there's still, looks like it could drop further. We have a bearish candle close here. We are into support here though, so keep that in mind, the support right here, uh, but overall biases to the downside. So I'm looking for price to come back and test the bottom here, 1.1380 level. So overall bias to the downside for Euro Swiss franc. Pound Swiss franc here, this one has closed bearish as well. Now we are into support, but the bias is to the downside. So looking for it to drop further into a 1.2850 level here. 
So bias for pound Swiss franc is to the downside. Dollar Swiss franc here, this one is looking bearish as well. We have a bearish candle close, looking for it to come back and test the bottom here, 0.9780. So looking for it to drop here. Pound CAD here. Let's just get rid of some of these so we can see this is looking bullish. We are into resistance right here. Um, with this one, because we are into resistance, so bias is to the upside, but I'm looking for price to do one of these. So just like dollar cad here, <coughs> excuse me, um, just like dollar cad, this one has a pin on top, but there's still, it's still a green candle, which means there is still uh, bullishness in it. So I would look for it to go and retest the high once again, this resistance here. If it stays below like it did previously, this could give a good opportunity for, uh, for a short at the high. But right now I'm looking for it to go and test that high once again. Now, if it breaks to the upside, if it manages to get to the other side, then the next one will be, next target could be 1.8140 level. So bias here is to the upside but target is 1.7793, so about 1.7800 will be my bias to the upside here. But if it crosses that, that is an important resistance, resistance here. If it crosses that, then I'm looking at 1.8150. Pound yen, pound yen here is interesting. We have been going back and forth. So right now, this is kind of where we are. So price is into support. There is still bearishness in it, but it has pushed up higher. So overall bias here is still to the downside. It's holding this overall uh, move here, the trend. So if you take a look here, it's been holding that trend line. So with this one, what I would expect is either price goes and test the trend line and then drop from there and do one of these. So bias, first of all, my bias is to the downside. Now it could go and do one of these, but if it breaks the trend line, then we could also see price go into this level here, into the high of the pins, or it could go all the way into this range that it's currently in. So overall, it's in this range and it's traded in this range for several, um, several weeks here and bias is to the downside. So I'm looking for price to essentially break down here. Um, and my target is a 139.80 level. But if it does not, if it breaks the trend line though, if it just does one of these, which is what we have been talking about a couple of other pairs. So I'm looking for it to retest the bottom here, but if it bounces off of that, then I'm, then we could see it go back into the range. In that case, the target will be, let me just draw this back on here. So 148.20 will be the target in that case. So we have to see how price reacts at the, at the support and then work according to that. Euro yen here, this one is, has pins all over the place. So we have pins to the upside. We had a nice pin bar, price dropped, then has pushed back up again. So this is where we are into this support and resistance area right here. So this looks like it could go higher here. So my bias will be to the upside, back into the top of this range. So a lot of these have been range bound. It's just been back and forth choppiness in the markets. Um, it, it looks like big moves when they're happening, but they're not, uh, they're just kind of going back and forth here. So with this one, I'm looking for price to go back into the high once again, 130.60 level. So if um, Euro Yen starts to move up or all the Yen crosses start to move up, so Pound Yen will move up as well. So just kind of look at them in relation to each other. So this one looking bullish, looking for price to go up into 130.60 level. Dollar yen here, dollar yen is looking bearish here. Again, this one has, like I said, a lot of them have been in, in the range here. So this one, 
looking for it to drop back into 180.1 108.15 so bias here is to the downside Aussie yen here this one has been okay so this one again has been range bound as well as we can see here price has been going back and forth in this range it um, rejected the high dropped into the bottom rejected the bottom so looking for it to go into the high there is still some bearishness in this which means it can go and test the low once again and give us a double bottom type of scenario right here so that will be my bias looking for it to drop can drop a bit more but because there is a big rejection it can also go straight into the high overall though it is range bound and best trading opportunities will be selling at the high and buying at the low for it to go back into the range so currently bias is sideways sideways but here it could come test the low and bounce once again or it can just continue on so this one here we had this is a this today is the opposite of this previously. So see how we had bullishness in this and we had a large pin which shows rejection of the top, but see how price went higher and then dropped. So it could do the same thing. It could go towards the bottom here and then push back up just like these ones did, or it could just go up from here. So that's why we have to watch out as to how this plays out. But currently it is range bound and it's staying between these uh, 84.50 is the high and 80.50 is the low and it can just bounce back between the two. CAD yen here, the weekly is looking bearish. So we had a pin bar last time, it's bearish now, looking for price to, uh, price to continue lower. Do keep in mind we are into support here. Price has reacted at this level multiple times. So we do need to see price break down from here. So right now we have, so this is what I'm looking for. But because we are into support, we do need to see a clear break of the low before taking a further short. Uh, it's not a good idea to take a short right into the support, but once it breaks through, then we can look for price to continue lower. My bias is to the downside. 80.50 is the target to the downside for CAD yen. New Zealand yen here. This one is, okay. So this one is looking bearish as well. We had a pin, so you saw a drop and now looking for price to continue lower. It is into support here, and price has not managed to break the support yet. So same thing, just like with Cadian we talked about, we need to see price break the support and then do one of these. So bias is to the downside, and target is 73.80 level, but again, need to see a break of the support before price continues lower. So bias is to the downside. Okay, so let's take a look at gold. Gold is looking bearish. We are into support here. So again, be careful with this one. This support level or support resistance level has been tested multiple times. So um, I would keep that in mind. Bias is still to the downside though, and we could see it drop further into 1236.30 level here back into this previous pin here in the bottom. So bias is to the downside, but again, we do need to see a breakdown of the support because otherwise it could just, uh, it could push up from here. Overall though, uh, bias to the downside. Let's take a quick look at oil. Actually last week oil went up, but dollar cat didn't uh, have much okay so this one is looking bullish actually that's quite a move to the upside here now next target is back into the high bullish looking bullish um for this one here as well or looking bullish for this one 72 64 will be the target to the upside for oil here and if oil continues strong then dollar cad can drop so that's something to bear in mind um, copper here, ooh, looking bearish, uh, rejected the high, and then uh, now back into support, but looking bullish. 
so I'm oh, sorry, looking bearish here. My apologies. Um, okay, so this one, it can come. So this one has also been trading in a range. A lot of things have been range bound here. So this is the range it's been trading it. It's there's this internal support uh, inside support here. So here looking for it to drop further back into the low here. 2.88 would be the target here. And then there's a question on uh, two questions. One is on Aussie dollar four hour chart. So let's go back. And then Swiss franc, Japanese yen. I have not traded that pair, but we'll take a look at it. Um, Aussie dollar, let's take a look. Okay, so right now from the weekly perspective, this is showing us a rejection. And the question is about, let me just read it again. My thoughts on Aussie dollar for our chart. Okay, so, um, and how much after the possible expansion of the trade wars? So trade wars are really throwing a wrench in things. It's causing the yen crosses to go all over the place and stuff like that. It's, it's been a little volatile. So, so let's uh, take a look and um, Aussie dollar for our. Um, okay, so I don't, so the way I look at it, I am not a big four hour chart person. I am more, I look at, from, look at it from the daily perspective more so. The daily here is looking quite strong, but we are into support here. So we are into the daily support. So if price is not able to break the daily support, it could turn around from here. Uh, the bottom here though, so we are, or sorry, support here, turning resistance. So if we are not able to break the resistance, we could see price move uh, back down, but this is looking quite strong. The problem here is this previous support now turning into resistance. And from four hour perspective, this is, uh, it's kind of pushing here. It could go higher into that level. So it's still looking bullish um, for it to turn. We need to see like a bearish candle close like this. So it could turn here because there is that, uh, like we talked about, there was that, uh, but I think this one is better here at, so 7450 is, so which is what 10 pips home where it currently is. Yeah, so it could turn at 7450 or it could go into 7480 level here. From the daily, it's looking bullish and it could go into the next level here. So right now I would say it's looking bullish, but we are into resistance. Um, and when things are into resistance, they don't always get through and they can turn around even though it may be a bullish candle. So I would uh, just take a, um, keep that in mind there. And then question about Bitcoin and then what else? Um, EuroCAD, EuroCAD, do I have EuroCAD? Okay, EuroCAD. EuroCAD is looking from weekly perspective, it's looking bullish. It is into resistance though. And from the daily here, that's a large pin. That's a large pin, sorry, excuse me. Um, all right, sorry about that. So here we have, um, I do see a pin here. So things could churn um, and we are into a resistance here. So let's go back. So from weekly perspective, this is looking bullish. There is room for it to go and there's room for it to go higher here. But again, like I said, this is uh, into resistance at this point. From daily, we do see a pin. Uh, but there is still bullishness and from a four hour here this is turning back down 
and yeah so it's bounced back but then it's coming into support so um i would say it could drop here and then push back from here so if we go back to our um so this is how i would see it i think we could see price do one of these um and then if and then do that basically test the bottom it is into support um here so price could pull back here go do a test of the high and then it could have struggle or it could struggle with this level right here but from a weekly perspective this is looking bullish so it could go back and test the high once again and it will really depend um, on a lower time frame once price gets into the high what happens because if it breaks higher there is room for it to go higher into 1.5720 level if it doesn't break the high then we could just see a rejection from here and next question was um, so overall, Anthony, I would say, yes, they're looking bullish here. Uh, Swiss franc, Japanese yen, and Bitcoin. So I think I may have a Bitcoin chart open already. So we'll do Bitcoin first. Bitcoin, here we go. Oh, looking bearish, quite bearish. Okay, so here, this one is back into the support and it's pushing into the support and this is where we are uh, let's go back to the daily yeah that's heavily pushing into support there um, and so looking bearish my bias is bearish here and next level here would be 55 80 level and then we are looking at 51 33 so um, I think still bias to the downside. It couldn't break, couldn't fill the gap, couldn't break above that uh, level where it opened. So now I'm looking, it's looking bearish right now. Okay, the next one was Swiss franc, Japanese yen. Let me see if I can pull a chart. Here we go chart okay so here this one is looking bullish actually and looking for it to go into the high there um so this one's a, bit, a little bit range bound here as well this is the overall range uh, right now it's looking bullish looking for it to go into 112.20 level that would be that's where i would be um, aiming for this one so biases to the upside for this okay so that's all i have i think those are all the questions and um all right so we will wrap it up yes it's being recorded um and the question is can you just look at three to four pairs of course yes um the idea is that you look at multiple pairs and then go into the ones that you like the best all right so before we wrap it up here just wanted to talk a little bit about the trade copier service that i am currently doing a beta test on um, so I'm launching the trade copier service and I'm going through a beta test. So I'm looking for beta testers for this one. Um, basically what this is, um, is any trades that I take into my account will be automatically will get copied to, uh, to your account as well. You still have full control over your account. You can change any of those trades. You can also, um, uh, you can, you know, you have full control over your money. You do not get to see any anything about your account. It's only the trades that will get executed into the account. So everything that um, I do in my account will translate into your account as well. So this is um, if you are interested um, 
uh, in participating in this. So the idea is that if you have, uh, if you're interested in the forex trading, but you don't have the time, a lot of times I hear from people that they don't have the time to trade or they have a full-time job and other family obligations. So um, if you are still wanting to participate, this is a, one of the options available. So right, so normally um, I'm, once everything is set up and I've uh, run it for a while, then the price will um, eventually go up to 997 a month and there will be a setup fee as well. But right now, uh, because I'm just doing the beta test, there's no setup fee and the price is only 297 per month. And then, um, as long as you will stay with the trade copy service, the price will never go up. So you'll get grandfathered in at this price, even once the price has gone up to that. So if you, or if you wanted to do a yearly subscription, it's twenty nine seventy per year. So you save um, six hundred dollars off of the subscription. So that's the trade copy service. If you are interested in it, you can go into. Um, you can go and um, you can go to Bitly, and this is the link here. Um, Bitly Venus Copier monthly or Venus Copier yearly, and um, there will be links in the description for that as well. So that's all I have um, for now. Oh, trade room. The trade room. The price for trade room is one hundred and ninety-seven dollars a month or uh, fifteen hundred dollars a year if you want to join that. And for the trade room, I do Tuesdays and Fridays New York, and then Mondays. Sorry. Wednesdays and Thursdays, I trade the London session. So uh, those are the four days that I trade. And it's $197 a month. And you also get access to my course, which is uh, the Learn to Trade Forex course, which I sell for $500. So it's actually quite a good deal um, if you want to sign up for that. So that's the trade room. Um, and I will include the links in uh, when I load it up to YouTube. I'll include the links for the trade room in there as well. All right, so that's all for now. Um, okay, no other questions, so we'll call it a wrap. You guys have a wonderful rest of the weekend and um, a great week uh, of trading. I'll see you next time, bye.